Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to the Paris Olympics is everything wrong with society. It's another Olympic reaction. Like just continuing at this point. This is more of a, a one, I guess, touching on the controversies that have been going on in the Olympics or around the Olympics. Maybe on the Olympics as like an organization because they take the piss. Let's be real. The money that they make and then the money that the athletes make. And that ain't fair, man. You got to pay the athletes better for starters with the money that you make. But I guess we're going to get into this. This is going to be some juicy information, juicy content. I'm here for it. I'm assuming some of you may get offended by it. I don't really know what's going to be mentioned here. But from this Olympics, it's the first Olympics that I've watched in the last, oh, in the last, I guess, 12 years. Because the last one I really watched was the 2012 Olympics. So I've been a lot more invested in it. And I've probably seen a lot more around this Olympics than I had with the Tokyo one, for example. But yeah, we're going to check this out. And... Without further ado, let's just jump into this video. The 2024 Olympic Games will go down as one of hey, the weirdest Olympics in history. It seems like every single day there's another controversy after controversy. And when the Games began with this sort of horrifying opening ceremony... Olympics opening ceremony sparked outrage with drag queens. I, I, I didn't see the opening ceremony, but I, I saw that a lot of people were pissed off. And I, I do understand why. I mean, if because this is obviously to do with what, like Christianity, right? If you, it's a bit mad. I, I can't, I can't speak too much on it because I didn't see it. But it is a bit mad. Like I guess when it comes to religion, people are very like strong in their beliefs, and they don't really probably want it to be mocked in a certain way or parodied in a certain way, as it says here. But I, I didn't see it, so I can't really speak on it. But I know there was a lot of outrage on online and stuff ceremony everyone knew it was going to be weird but on the other hand it's really not that surprising at all as it seems the olympics is just a mirror reflecting the current state of the world that we live in today it is a parody of modernity but how did the pinnacle of sports something that was once considered a testament of human spirit determination and the relentless pursuit of excellence become as strange and corrupted as it is today almost bringing more division to the world Bro, than was that to do with the was it the triath triathletes I can't remember. Swimming in the scene river, mate. The scene? Yeah, the scene. I think it's how you pronounce it. Mate, <laughs> how was that even allowed? It's mad. It's absolutely crazy. Unity. With memes after memes coming out about the Olympics, let's unpack it all and see what went so wrong from the beginning of the Paris Olympics. You see, the Olympics has always reflected the state of the world. It was cancelled during World War I and II because of the wars, and South Africa was even banned from participating in the Olympics between 1964 and 1988, all due to its apartheid policies. However, the Olympics are meant to bring the world together, rather than enforce any sort of separation. This goes back to the Olympic origins when Olympic truce was established in ancient Greece. What this has meant for the Olympics for hundreds of years is a halt in hostilities in the name of granting athletes safe passage and promoting world peace. Some which sounds great in theory, but not so simple in reality. You see, all the athletes attending the Olympic Games have to agree to Rule 50 guidelines about what they can publicly express, especially when it comes to political and religious statements. The International oh. Olympic Committee, otherwise known as the IOC, has a set of rules that restricts demonstrations or political, religious, and racial propaganda at Olympic sites. The purpose of this is to maintain the neutrality of the Games and ensure that the focus remains on the athletes' performances and international unity through sports. Yeah. And it seems like it's the complete opposite of this. And instead, it's a perfect parody of the current world we live in. in 2024, a period of escalating tensions globally, cultural divides, and deepening political issues. Even before the Olympics began, there were already protests regarding which countries could participate and which countries couldn't along with which people were able to participate and which ones weren't. But the French government did their best to make sure it all went down as planned, as they wanted to show Paris, the city of love, as the perfect place to visit. Which is why, as Paris accepted the 2024 Olympics, the French government accelerated the relocation of homeless individuals from the city to other regions. Wow. France's government has ramped up its efforts to relocate homeless migrants out of Paris one year before it hosts the Olympics. At least 1,800 homeless people have been moved from the French capital to one of 10 temporary shelters across the country since April. They also cancelled emergency housing contracts to accommodate Olympic tourists, choosing to prioritise the country's aesthetic and commercial interests over the welfare of vulnerable populations, almost as a metaphor for how social media is used, painting a picture of the beautiful parts of our lives and hiding everything bad from those around us. But even still, this is always normal for every Olympics Games in the recent years. But the truth started unravelling as soon as it began. In the French government's aim to make the Olympics the cheapest Olympics in history, many Olympians 
students were confronted with a very strange situation. Cardboard box beds, no air conditioning. And <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, they've really gone out on the cheapness of... The cheapness, is that even a word? Cheapness? I don't know. Of the games. Come on. I mean, Paris gets pretty hot in the summer. Small rations of food were all that the Olympians were given. And if what? that wasn't bad enough, there was a significant safety issue as dozens of Olympians were robbed, attacked, and harassed. Logan Martins, one of Australia's cycling Olympians, shared a video of his van after he had been broken into. Damn. I have not seen this so, stuff. Uh, van got broken into last night. Luckily, my bike's right in there. Although my bike bags are in there with some things in it. Crazy start to the trip. Personal items, including his wallet and backpack, were stolen, but thankfully not his bicycle, which could have actually meant he would never be able to compete or would have to fork out a bunch of money to cover the costs. And with the added stress, it probably wouldn't have been great for his race. In other cases, a fellow Australian who was the coach of the national hockey team found various unauthorized transactions on his bank account following the theft of his bank card. A Japanese rugby sevens player reported the loss of a significant amount of cash and valuable jewelry. All of this led to many Olympians opting wow. to find close hotels instead of staying in their provided for accommodation already wow. a huge failure on the IOC's part. But while the athletes were complaining about their experience and the rampant crime that was surrounding them, nobody is repairing for the visual crime of the opening ceremony. Now, no matter what angle you take on this, left or right, the outrageous 2024 Olympics opening was one of the weirdest, most dystopian I haven't seen it. I've literally not seen it. ...and arguably blasphemous ceremonies we've ever seen. I mean, the main act on the opening night included a rendition of the Last Supper painting by Leonardo da Vinci. Now, while the IOC and the choreographer of the opening ceremony made claims that it was really a rendition of the Feast of Dionysus, there were clear indicators that showed this wasn't really the case. At the center of the table was Barbara Butch, wearing a halo-like sun image reminiscent of traditional depictions of Jesus Christ and Catholic art. She posted a story celebrating the new gay testament, only to delete it later as the controversy over the situation rose. Now, no matter what you think, this definitely seems at least to be a mockery of the faith that 2.6 billion on Earth follow, and something that clearly goes against the IOC's own expectations according to Rule yeah, that's just that is one of the things. If they have all these rules with what athletes can and can't do, why is it not the same just for the whole ceremony and just the whole organisation? Like In the whole two and a half weeks, surely they should follow their own rules themselves, but I guess they probably saw this as an opportunity to would it make them more money i assume it probably would have or at least got a lot more eyes on it because it would have caused a lot of controversy 50. But even if you were to agree with the objection that it was just a representation of anything Christian, <coughs> the IOC still used this moment for something most of the world doesn't agree with. People dancing promiscuously on the centre stage in one of the most viewed live sporting events in history. An opening ceremony that has nothing to do with the Olympics. I not any of this. Was it like... Was it just loads of stuff going on in the whole ceremony? I thought it was just for one specific time, like for one specific moment, but was it that whole ceremony where just all like these these things were going on one where this random woman was in the center stage instead of somebody with the physique of an athlete in fact this entire thing had nothing to do with athletics and oh, was no. deeply controversial for many people around the world already people were turning off the tv not watching this just because of this opening ceremony that's quite a good way to turn people's eyes away from it like he said people just want to see the sports i didn't see it again so that's I mean, I'm not going to say this would have stopped me from watching it because it probably wouldn't because I don't really care either way. But I understand the outrage and I sort of see this in a way of like just going a bit over the top. But this would have turned a lot of people away from this for sure. But then the IOC would take even more weird stances. They would force servers to duct tape crosses showing on their boards and prevented athletes from wearing hijab. What? What the fuck? jabs, crosses, or anything that shows their religious beliefs. This marred with other failures, such as calling South Korea by North Korea's formal name, littering the Sina. It was at 3.30 this morning, this water was tested again. The data showed risky levels. Was it, um, E. coli? Levels of E. coli bacteria, yeah. again. Mad. And it's no surprise the Sen is dirty. For a century, swimming was banned until the Olympics came here. But plans to promote Paris have turned to embarrassment. 
The men's triathlon postponed hours before it was due to start here. The Olympic Wild. flag was raised upside down at the opening show, along with a bunch of horrific viewing experiences to those who paid nearly 2,000 euros to watch the ceremony live. It always seemed like a giant failure that spread across social media. It was only once the world roared back with outrage over the scenario that the IOC gave a half-hearted apology for did things seem to change. But little did people know what they had in store for the 2024 Olympics. In talking about opening ceremonies, I remember the Beijing one. That's probably the first Olympics I really remember watching. Bits of here and there. And the opening ceremony for that, wasn't it like really just like, <clears throat> wasn't it just really perfect? Like I just remember the drumming and stuff. I think it showed a little image of it there. It's just they were all drumming in tandem and stuff like that. The London 2012 opening ceremony, I think that one was pretty good. I've not, I've not seen the Beijing, I'm sorry, not Beijing. I've not seen the Rio one and I've not seen the Tokyo one. So I can't really compare to those and previous ones I wouldn't have seen them either but was the London 2012 one pretty decent like it, I feel like it showed a lot of the history of London it was quite a not a political one at all it was just more so just learning about the city and I guess the country as well like the host country that's sort of what it should be about like the the the, the sort of I guess the politic the politicalization of everything it's just a bit of a shame. Sometimes you just want to have something to watch where it's like, <clears throat> my, my throat is destroyed, where it's just a bit more like, of like, I guess a bit of a storytelling thing or a lesson on what, what you're sort of watching, the, the city learning about certain things, you know, but again, I can't say I, I know a lot about opening ceremonies in general, so maybe there's been more of this in the past. I'm not sure, but based on the outrage, I assume that's not the case. What would happen know. if you dropped your vape from 40,000 feet in the air? <laughs> well, you might want to find out once you've tried Fume. Fume is an award. Is he promoting a vape company? Brother, ugh. Come on, you can't be saying all this and then promoting vape companies. Get your money, of course, but come on, man. Can't be doing that. If he wants to load. There you go. 2024 Olympics has probably been the most covered Olympics in history, as each athlete has shared their experiences on social media, and as viewers watch together and shared their opinions on every moment in every sport. That's the Turkish shooter, in it? He's a real G, man. It's had a lot of good, bad, and really ugly. Good in the sense that it's allowed athletes to make a personal connection like never before. Take the surfing in the 2024 Olympics. This is the only sport that is 10,000 miles away from France taking place in the French Polynesian island, Tahiti. This is mental. This is mad. It's so far away. This has also meant that the sports doesn't have a live audience, but the athletes have had their opportunity to share their unique experience with the rest of the world. From having their own cruise ship as their version of the Olympic Village, to an inside look as surfers prepared for the Olympics. Ground cool. coverage not provided by the IOC. <clears throat> Additionally, there was a life-changing moment as one Brazilian surfer, Gabriel Medina, scored a near-perfect 9.90. The Go photographer on. capturing the moment went from 2,000 Instagram followers to 200,000 in just a couple of days. Oh, the wow. memes surrounding moments of the Olympics have burst out in every way, but one man in particular has stolen the show of the Olympics, receiving more than five minutes of fame. What he became an internet sensation, a meme, and the parody you'd expect to gain popularity during the Olympics. The silver medal Turkish shooter, Yusef, stood out from all of his competitors, who would usually wear special glasses used to focus on targets Not him, and cover man. their other eye from all vision. But this absolute legend just showed up, one hand in pocket, and took a moment to take his shot, and receiving a silver medal for doing so. Social media ate this up, and if you haven't seen the meme about Yusef, you're hiding on a rock. It's amazing how his fame spread a moment, and he became the most popular person on earth for just one day. But it also perfectly encapsulates our digital era. His moment of fame is a clear snapshot of how social media can amplify a single unique moment into a global phenomenon. Yet it wouldn't be surprising if almost everybody forgets about this moment in just a week. Here today, gone tomorrow. The contemporary world's attention span is just so short, which is what's so funny about these Olympic moments. Because as social media brings us closer to events and people we would never otherwise encounter, it also ushers us swiftly from one fascination to the next, often without a backward glance. But this also comes with a very disturbing side, as we'd see on August 1st. On August 1st, about a week into the Olympics, <coughs> Algerian and Maine Khalif would compete in a boxing match against Italy's Angela Carini in the welterweight division. The fight only lasted 46 seconds, as Angela would take two deep blows to the face. Instead of completing the match, she chose to forfeit, crying this is unjust, and refusing to shake her opponent's hands. She instead fell to her knees crying as she realized her Olympic dreams had been shattered during her first fight. The media quickly picked this up, and it went completely viral, reporting how the This has been absolutely everywhere. Like, 
everywhere. Nigerian boxer had previously been banned from competing in the World Championships because she failed testosterone and gender eligibility tests. Famous people like JK Rowling, Elon Musk, and even Logan Paul all shared their opinions over the situation. Even Donald Trump came to the party using this as a political moment to say I will keep men out of women's sports, posting a picture of the Algerian as they punch Angela in the face. But the moment quickly spiraled. The whole situation was seen as a male born boxer fighting against a And I remember when I first saw this, I was like, this is this is not it. Because my stance on sport is like I think people I, people do whatever they want to do. When you're a grown adult, you can do what you want to do. But in sports, I feel like especially certain sports where you're going to be punching each other and all this you should not be allowing like these not this scenario but scenarios where it's similar to this where people thought it was a transgender boxer to fight against women because that's dangerous i say i say actually probably in all sports realistically because i feel like it would just probably undermine more than anything women's sports but this when i first was i was like god this is crazy but when you actually learn about what it was it's still like a bit of a a grey area because I know um, she wasn't allowed to fight or she's not allowed to fight in like within boxing, certain boxing um, ruling committees or whatever they're called. But the Olympics changed the rules. So it is still a bit of a grey area, but people still think this is a transgender boxer and it's mad that no one, like, like so many people still believe that when it's not the case biological female, obviously giving the Algerian a huge advantage from having so much testosterone and a general male physique, with people pointing to the fact that she was disqualified from the Women's World Championships in New Delhi for failing a gender eligibility test. <coughs> However, this wasn't for the reason that most of the media seemed to point out. You see, Algeria is a country that criminalizes same-sex sexuality. This is what I was thinking. Like, a, I feel like it's a very strong, um, very strict country. Where you, if you're like, if you're coming out as trans, you're probably gonna get the worst possible thing happening to you because it's a very Muslim country and they've obviously got different beliefs. So when I saw this and I, when you realise this, it's like this just couldn't be the case. And then having them compete in the Olympics, but still, some people just choose not to like believe that that's the case or whatever it is. Like they're still running away with that that story that story that initially came out activity between men and between women and their laws prohibit the possibility to change legal gender so the assumption that they would send somebody who was trans to the olympics did seem kind of crazy to begin with the truth came out that she actually had a disorder of sex development a rare condition where a baby's reproductive organs don't develop the typical way before birth leading to an ambiguous genital appearance these conditions might not be apparent until puberty but can lead to incorrect sex assignment at birth especially where medical resources are scarce meaning the algerian was assigned as a woman at birth and grew up as such but this wasn't the information that was shared rapidly and instead no. even more outrage poured over the olympics something yeah. that would only happen in 2024 and that, that like she has probably received so much abuse beyond belief man like the whole world has seen this the amount of stuff that she's going to have faced i can't really imagine and did you see the punch that caused the fight to win again i'm not for allowing like like women's sports i don't think you should allow someone who like a transgender person beat up um a woman because i just feel like that's such a physical disadvantage such a physical disadvantage but the punch that this this person done that ended the fight it was it was just like two punches like you're in professional boxing i think olympics is professional boxing i could be wrong i think i think they actually wear head guards so maybe it's semi-professional boxing but you're in the olympics boxing that's just like come on come on the echo chambers we can find ourselves to allow it's the definitely she's definitely got a disadvantage because like the Imane Khalif, I know there's there is physical advantages, which is why I say it is a grey area. And in general, she probably like is gonna struggle, but those like those things to end the fight, I just thought it was a bit mad. Or to make a strong belief about something without really knowing the full context here. Just sparking more cultural divide that's sure. already spreading across the world today. And while there might still be reason to be upset over the situation, yeah. you can't really blame the boxers. And another lightweight woman boxer Ling Yu Ting. I actually haven't seen this one at all. I've seen a picture of this person, but I was like, you know what, from what's happened with this one, I can't be asked to see all this stuff. But what has happened with this one? Who has the exact same condition for competing in the Olympics. Rather, it seemed to be the IOC's oh, failure once again to actually clarify what makes fair fights in the Olympic There you go. Ring. 
The International Boxing Association, which previously banned Khalid from competing in its competitions, took a stand after Angela Carini forfeited her Olympic match, and as a result, Angela will now receive $50,000. In a statement, the IBA president tore into the IOC's Thomas Bach, calling him evil for what he was doing to women's sports, as the IOC failed to give proper guidelines about the entire situation, and other reason that athletes like Lin Yuting and Khalif were able to join in on the sports in the first place. And what I also found out apparently is a lot of countries are used to specifically look for people with this condition because it gives them an advantage. So I don't know how many times this has happened before, but like the fact that this is even looked for it's just the world is fucked man like come on but who was the runner who i think there was a runner who had this exact same condition i don't know what what um event it was but i think she was banned but she, i think she was just dominant as well so like it's just one of those ones where it's the olympics at the end of the day or the ioc that they're, they're the ones who really need we really need to blame for this happening like, let's be real. And it's, yeah, they're, they're very messed up in many ways, the Olympics, but this is just another spot where they've obviously missed the mark completely. The reality is this probably isn't about political beliefs, more so about fairness, and even more so that women exactly. athletes are in danger and could face some serious physical consequences as a result. So the IOC has addressed this officially, explaining that, quote, national boxing federations must reach consensus around a new international federation in order for boxing to be included on the sports program of the Olympic Games in LA 28. But while there's been a lot of noise over these two contestants, a really another contra- Here we go. Here we go. And this has been, I've, I didn't see any of this. So I saw a tweet that was initially talking about Imain Khalif and was about the outrage of this. And then there's been no outrage of this guy. And when I found out what this person had done before, like three days ago, I didn't know who he was. And I found out what he had done. This is the most disgusting thing that the fact that they're allowing someone like this to even compete. And I still don't even think there's that much outrage about him now. I think they're just sort of trying to brush it under the brush it under the carpet or something like i'm assuming some of you will know but what this man has done controversial contestant to join the 2024 olympics was steven van der Vilder, a dutch <laughs> volleyball player and a convicted child ara back in 2014 van der Vilder, a friend of the 12 year old girl on facebook flew from his hometown in the netherlands to england specifically to meet with the girl gave her alcohol and allegedly doing very bad things to her multiple times he eventually got convicted of arring an individual under the age of 13 in 2016 and was sentenced to four years in prison this happened just when his athletic career was taking off and the judge who gave him his sentence went on record to say quote your hopes of representing your country as an olympic athlete now lie as a shadow if only that was the case dream and almost everybody believed this was the end of his career as it should be but just 13 months later he was suddenly released from prison and still put on the olympic team for the 2024 olympics that's right the ioc knowing of this particular circumstance have even given van der Vilde special privileges that other olympians don't have he was given accommodation outside of the Olympic Village. He doesn't take any interviews or talk to the press during the Olympics and has protection in case of any circumstances. Which is really crazy that after being convicted of such an awful crime, he's been protected more than any other Olympian. All the while, it's easy to argue that allowing a criminal to compete contradicts the core values of the Olympics. And while the IOC has done what it can to bring a truce to its athletes, both Israel and Palestine joining the Olympic Games has caused even more tensions. It seems like the infamous Rule 50 isn't being followed. With the current war between Hamas and Israel, it's a political issue that has left the world divided. And so every time a Palestinian or Israeli has competed in the Olympics, it's been met with some sort of controversy. Leading up to the game, a French MP said that Israeli athletes are not welcome at the Paris Olympics. And the backlash to this was huge. And then the Palestinian Olympic chief made a point that he and the team would not shake any Israeli's hands during the Olympics, despite the agreed upon truce that comes with competing in the Olympics. This has come with multiple protests to Israelis entering the country and competing, which is why the French police are now having to take extra precautions around Israeli athletes. And then others claim that Palestine should never have been allowed in the first place either with division spreading all across social media about the situation. All of this is why the 2024 Paris Olympics is really much more than just a series of athletic contests. It has become a profound reflection of the world's current state, which makes idiocracy feel like less and less of a distant future and more just our coming reality, which is why there is no doubt the Olympics will come to be known as the parody of 2024. Thanks to Fiona I mean, for sponsoring- the fact that there's still a week to go in the Olympics. As I'm doing this reaction, there's still a week to go. I'm assuming there's going to be more things that happen. The Olympics should be about sports, not about promoting political ideology. Marion Sonic Olympic Games 
goodness. <laughs> Fair enough. France is the definition of why good, why doing good when it's way easier to look good. If I cared less, if I cared any less about the Olympics, I would create a singularity. I mean, it's just a bit crazy, and it not weirdest worst Olympics in history. The nah, the weirdest, the weirdest would have been. So the, the Tokyo one was crazy because there was literally no one there. The Olympics, I think the 1904 Olympics. Recently, I've just been looking at loads of stuff to do with the Olympics. I wouldn't have known this two weeks ago. The 1904 Olympics in St. Louis because I think it was pretty much just American athletes competing because at that point in time, there was no travel possible. And then the 1936 Olympics where Hitler was there on, is it, what was he on? He was high on... What's the drug that he was on? I want to say ketamine, but I don't think it was. What were, all, what, what were the Germans taking in the 1930s and the 1940s? Not ketamine. Something else. Something similar, I think. Or something like coke, maybe. I don't know. Something. <laughs> the, the Olympics during 1936 in Germany. Crazy as well. So there's obviously Olympics that were a lot worse. Because there's been situations where it's like, wow, this is cr this is just how is this happening? But this one has a lot of stuff going on because I don't remember seeing stuff on the internet realistically about the Tokyo Olympics anywhere near as much as what's happening in this one. So it is what it is. I assume a lot of people will watch this and have different opinions to me or different opinions to this person. So I guess feel free to say what you want in the comments. But yeah, this is what's happened so far. I mean, other than this, hopefully you've enjoyed the sports. The hundred meters happened yesterday and at the 100 meter final and for me that's the most enjoyable time the closest 100 meters i think it was the first 100 meters has ever been where everyone's ran under 10 seconds and i also saw something about how the fastest person who won gold in the 90 94 olympics olympics in the 90s ran a time when he won gold slower than eighth place oh sorry ninth place and ran in the olympic final yesterday so yeah, it's kind of crazy. It just shows you how, I guess, the advancement of human, not technology, but training and health and nutrition and stuff. But hey, I just thought that was a pretty interesting fact. Ending on a note like that, I thought that would be a good thing to do. But yeah, that's that. Until next time, I subscribe. Peace.